Is there a scenario in the new Big Ten and expanded playoffs where Ohio State and Michigan play twice or even three times in a season? That begs the question, is too much of a good thing bad? That is absolutely a possibility because that, you know, the, the one regular season matchup, then the Big Ten championship game matchup, then the playoff matchup. And I, I, I don't even know how we'll feel about it until it's here because now we say it's too much. It's too much of a good thing, but each one of those matchups are going to be significant in their own way, and they'll have their own buildup. And then maybe the Big Ten championship game, it, it won't necessarily be as big because if both teams are getting in, like if they go in there undefeated, or, or you know, I guess even with uh, they wouldn't go into the Big Ten championship game undefeated. Somebody's going to have a loss. But as a, as a second loss, say Ohio State beats Michigan two straight times, is that going to knock out a two-loss Michigan team from the playoffs if their only losses are to Ohio State? No. So you, they'll go into that game probably both knowing that they're both going to make the playoffs. So maybe the Big Ten Championship game isn't as big as the regular season game or the playoff game. But I think they'll have their own um, you know, just atmospheres, each of them, and – I don't. I don't know that it's. Uh, again, I, I think we'll know more how we feel when we're in it than now. I might. I still think it's. They're all going to be very, very big. You know. Yeah. There's the possibility the teams could play a second time in a Big Ten championship game, and if that happens, the ramifications of that are probably both teams are in the playoff, but the winner will get a bye, and the loser will get to host a game. You know, as a five to eight seed, you know, so that's what the stakes of those type games could look like. And then potentially in this, you know, in the, uh, in the playoff, you know, semifinals or championship game or whatever could have been the championship game this past year had uh, everything fallen the way that uh, it probably could have and should have. But uh, you know, um, think about Duke and North Carolina, they played a, an extra game, I think it was last year, not this past school year, but the year before in the final four. And as memory serves me correct, the year that there were three big East teams in the uh, final four way back when Villanova won it, like 1985, I think two of those teams may have played each other four times, twice in the regular season, once in the conference tournament, and then once in the final four. I don't recall which matchup it was, but uh yeah, it was, uh, you know, I don't think anybody complained when it was Duke and North Carolina in the Final Four uh, in basketball. I think everybody thought, man, this is interesting, isn't it? And uh, another great chapter in their lore, so to speak. Um, I think one of the issues is if there's a rematch seven days later and, okay, you've already we've already proven we can beat this team, we may have even gone on the road and beaten this team. And now we have to turn around and do it again seven days later. And the team that lost is going to be ultra motivated to not lose a second time to their rival in an eight day period. Boy, that'd be the doozy of all doozies to lose to them twice in one season. So you pull out heaven and earth and all the stops to avoid that from happening and it negates the first win, which could have even been on the road at the other team's stadium. So, man, I don't know. That's uh, a lot of stuff. The Big 12 has been dealing with this with automatic rematches in the last several years because they play a full round robin uh, of nine regular season games. And then there is a rematch with two of those teams playing each other. So you've had Texas and Oklahoma, great rivalry in the rematch in the championship game in some years and, and that's um, automatically dictated as a rematch uh, into this format uh, because it won't be in the big 10 going forward because there'll be 16 teams and there'll be some buys, but, uh, or, or some, some teams that you don't play. But uh, so, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think, you know, a lot of different dynamics to it and uh, one way or the other, you know, somebody's going to come out of that uh, second or third game with the, uh, some real bragging rights, no doubt about it. The 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 goal of negating the regular season win with a conference championship win is just that shouldn't sit right with anybody, and yet it is pretty amazing. 
it'll sit right with the team who's fan, you know, the fans of the team who won. Yeah. See that banner? We won the won the Big Ten championship. We would have had nonstop debate talk that would have never ended and dissected every play had those two met, of course, in the national championship game, had Ohio State won that game, and then you've got Michigan bragging rights. We beat you a second consecutive season. We uh, won the Big Ten championship, the Ohio State bragging rights, of course, winning the rematch in the national championship. Or even if Michigan doesn't make the national championship, uh, Ohio State wins a national championship without beating Michigan. Uh, I, I was I was set up for that scenario for the off season to think you know the the debate between who had the better season, who's got the bragging rights when a team wins a national championship but loses to its rival. Uh, I was sitting here trying to come up with a worst case scenario of Ohio State Michigan in a particular season in a twelve team playoff. I guess one would be that the unlikelihood that USC or Penn state has won the big 10, but they're both going to the playoff and therefore they're playing a final game of the regular season, both secure in the playoff, but without a chance of winning the big 10 championship. Hmm. So you just like, if, if uh, USC just leaves their starters at home and doesn't travel to happy Valley and you just, rest up for the for the playoffs is that what you're saying i'm saying let's say usc has the tiebreaker and they're undefeated and ohio state and michigan each have a loss and they have no shot of winning the big 10 championship and they're just playing a a regular rivalry game which in the past has always been Mm. sufficient enough uh but knowing too that they're secure in their playoff status you know they're both 10 and one that it would just make for a bit of a lackluster setting yeah i i've heard people speculate on that even regards to a second ohio state michigan game or something like that resting starters um i i guess it will probably happen at some point but you know it it hasn't happened yet and it there's been not necessarily an instance for it to happen although i guess Georgia probably could have <laughs> at any point. Georgia could rest their starters for a game and be okay, especially with their non-conference. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see it when it happens. Then I don't. I can't say it's not going to happen because I kind of expect it to. But you know, um, it it would be unfortunate being that college football is such a, or I guess it used to be a, a regular season sport, and to just give up one of those games um it's unfortunate but i guess is is that the price for the playoffs i guess and it is if, if the coaches and the players are willing to accept it how do i guess the other question is how, how would the players feel about that this is what we're coming to is that whatever we've accepted as the normal in the past is no longer going to be normal and i think that that's what we have to come to grips with that what was perfect setup in the past is no longer a perfect setup. Even, you know, that you said Ohio State and Michigan would play for the Big Ten Eastern Division Championship and the birth in the championship game, that's no longer true. So, or could be, you know, no longer true if they go to one large division. So, um, you know, I guess we just have to come to grips with the idea that it's going to be an imperfect world and there's going to be much more asked of the coaches and players than has ever been before. And what we've always thought should be the end-all be-all on November the 25th is no longer the end-all be-all. And that's just going to have to be the fact of the matter going forward that there are truly bigger, bigger fish to fry in the weeks following that game than – in that game. So, I mean, it could have some stakes in terms of getting a buy or a home field game or whatever, but beyond that, it's just going to be a footnote. It seems like in a lot of years into what, you know, other they they won the national championship. Oh, and earlier in the season, they continued their mastery over their rival. You know, that's how it's going to be regarded. You know, uh, I think that, that it's just a footnote along the way. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a week seven game dropped to that 
lack of importance, but it is uh, certainly going to be less important as the years go on. For as much as I've pushed for an expanded playoff, more from the standpoint of I want a fair and equitable playoff. I've, I've looked at it logistically and I've looked at it in regards to what I believe is fair and just in giving every conference an opportunity and all of that in terms of the feel and the, you know, the visceral response to it. This is where the more we talk about a 12 team playoff, the more I don't like it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but how do you uh, how do you think you're going to feel in the midst of it? As you know, with conference championship weekend next year, and then that leading into it, like this is going to be the biggest thing in college football history. Uh, but I understand some of the concerns for it, absolutely. But um, how do you think you're going to feel when it's when you're in the midst of it? I think some of it will depend on the matchups that we get, and. Um, I think what has hurt the New Year's Six is the idea that, you know, you have an ACC champion that's ranked 20th, you know, some year that gets a spot. And, um, you know, in the years where the Sugar Bowl doesn't have the, uh, the semifinals, they still put an SEC team in there that didn't make the playoff and they could be ranked 15th or 18th or whatever. And it just, you know, those games just didn't catch maybe the imagination. I think if we get what we think are good matchups, five versus 12, let's say, and whatever it is, you know, six versus 11, seven versus 10, and eight versus nine, and their teams that we believe are good to great teams and they make good compelling matchups. And then you go to uh, the quarterfinal round and, you know, one versus eight, two versus seven or whatever. And, and they're good compelling matchups and they're not 40 point blowouts. Then I think that we have something, but if there is, as we've seen in some of these recent years, a clear top three or four that would just blow everybody else out on a neutral field or whatever, then, you know, I think it, it may not be what everyone's looking for. But uh, I think that the, the opportunity and the chance to put some matchups that we don't normally get to see on the field, I think, is a positive thing. So, um, I'm just hoping that people keep an open mind and, and um, that we get the matchups that we want and we deserve is kind of kind of how I look at it. And not just different matchups, but in, in unique places on campus for those first rounders. Yep. That's going to be cool. Yeah. Or cold. <laughs> Literally and figuratively, it's going to be cool. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think – I think we're in the midst of getting more football, we're going to get more good football, more great football, more bad football. We're going to get the variety of all of that. Um, I do believe that unless things change, we're going to be watching at least my feeling and watching, let's say Penn state and Tennessee in their current status as a seven, 10 or eight, nine game. I'll say I'm all in for this, watching a good football game, two good teams, but I don't anticipate that either one of these two teams is going to factor truly into the national championship. Yeah. You make a good point there. They're just you, adding, I mean, they went, they went from four to 12 for no reason. It could have gone to eight to see how we like it, you know, before they added this extra layer of dumb BS in there with these, you know, cockamamie games on uh, campuses. So, um, you know, is what it is. I, I definitely think we're going to get more good games because I don't, and we will obviously get more bad games, but we have gotten so many bad games from the CFP that uh, expanding the playoffs will give us more opportunity for good games. But like last year was the first time that there were, there was two semifinal games uh, that, that there weren't, there wasn't a game in the semifinals that was decided by at least 17 points. You know, like in terms of both of those games were close. Every other year, there's been at least one game that has been uh, 
decided by at least 17 points or more in the semifinals. And you, you can do the same thing for the, the championship game. Um, I'm just looking like they're the, the you've had three decided by one score and, and that was um, the 15th, 16 and 2017 season. Everything else has been multiple touchdowns. So, you know, we may still end up with a, a blowout at the end and there'll be some blowouts in the beginning as well, but um, we'll get more good games and, and more games like the two semifinals last year, I think. And that, that would be, that's, that's a win. 